At the 1990 Los Angeles Auto Show, people stopped in their tracks to gawk at this sleek, silver bullet-shaped concept that would later morph into the EV1. Engineered and developed with high-tech California contractor Aerovironment, the impact did more than just look cool. It could sprint from 0 to 60 miles per hour in a, then quick, 8 seconds and had achieved, in one test from 100% to absolute zero state of charge under ideal conditions at GM's Arizona Desert Proving Grounds, a stunning 125 miles of range. At the time, that was better performance than any other practical electric car could claim. Before Tesla and the widespread popularity of electric cars, General Motors had its own thing going on, the GM EV1 was the car that first brought enthusiasm and excitement to the modern world of electric cars in America, though it was only available for six years through GM direct leasing programs, the EV1 grew a relatively massive following during its time on the road. It was one of the first mass-produced electric cars to be openly available to consumers. The lease program was considered a real-world test project. The lessees were pretty much beta testers of the EV1, and GM held the right to revoke a lease whenever they deemed necessary. Depending on where the lessee lived, the EV1 could cost between $399 a month to $549 a month. All EV1s were essentially hand-built using a unique, craft station process in the small Lansing Craft Center plant that had previously built the Buick Riata. In late November 1996, to a round of applause from assembled team members, the first 1997 models were loaded on transporters for shipment to specially trained Saturn dealers. However, when EV1 customer demand proved so weak that suppliers stopped making replacement parts, GM had to pull the proverbial plug. Lithium polymer batteries were not happening, so until a practical, affordable, gasoline-competitive battery technology could be developed, there would be no GM EV2 or EV3. Ultimately, just 660 of these Gen 2 1997 EV1s were built, with 288 leased that first year, followed by 457 Gen 2 99s, some with the optional NMH batteries for double range. No 98 models were built while GM engineers reworked the battery tunnel to provide cooling for the optional batteries, which were not offered in Arizona because they performed poorly in hot weather at that early stage of development. Toyota, Nissan, Honda, Ford and every other automaker facing California's unrealistic EV mandate also gave up, and CARB eventually was persuaded to back off its ill-considered force-feeding of technology that was nowhere near market-ready. GM collected all EV1 production vehicles when their three-year leases expired and destroyed all but about 40 examples that were donated to universities and museums with deactivated powertrains. That made most of their lessees, who genuinely loved their EV1s and did not want to relinquish them, extremely unhappy. For those who contend EV1 lessees should have been permitted to buy and keep their cars, there are three practical, tangible reasons that GM didn't allow any of them to remain in private hands. First, there were serious liability risks for both untrained owners and technicians to deal with aging 312V batteries. Second, GM had a reasonable desire to protect its proprietary technology and prevent its competitors from reverse engineering the car. Finally, there was the matter of state laws requiring parts and service support for up to 15 years after sale, impossible since many EV1 part suppliers went out of business or no longer made the necessary components.